Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It's me, Brian Kyle McCord. I might look a little bit different than uh, you saw me the last time, but that's because it's been almost two years since I've made anything, and I don't know if I'm coming back, but this video has been sitting in my computer for a long time, and uh, I always really wanted to finish it, and it's a Christmas video, so I've spent a couple of hours here trying to finish it up, and I thought I would just add this new little intro here because it kind of needs a little bit of an update. So enjoy the video. Hello everybody, it's Kyle. As you all know, I'm a big fan of Back to the Future. And last year I got the animated series. I said I was going to review it at some point and I didn't. But today that's kind of going to change a little bit because this year for Christmas, I got one single episode of the animated series called A Dickens of a Christmas. And I didn't even know there was a Christmas episode. So we're going to get ready and review A Dickens of a Christmas. What a name. Back to the Future, the animated show uses Back in Time as their theme song, but they don't use the right version. It's like hardcore. It's probably the coolest part about the show, but like it's just not as good as the Huey Lewis version. All right, here's the live action part. The weird part about that to me is that they have Christopher Lloyd at their fingertips. Don't tell me that's damaged as well. And he still doesn't do Doc's voice. And I distinctly forbear any more baked goods. There's Dan Castanella as Rick. Sanchez. I don't hate Dan Castanella. He's a really talented voice actor, but every time Doc speaks in this cartoon, all I can hear is Homer Simpson. Anyway, live action Doc is working on the DeLorean. I don't know why there's a DeLorean. They destroyed it in the last movie, but whatever. So Doc and his cargo pants are wishing cars didn't exist because that would mean they wouldn't have to work on cars. Somehow this segues into the show where it's really hot. So hot that everyone is arguing and shouting at each other until Clara says, Well, maybe if it weren't hot as the Dickens. So obviously Doc thinks of Charles Dickens and decides that they need to go have Christmas in the middle of July. Because they can do that. They can, they can time travel. So they go to 1984 London to cool off and get some Christmas spirit. By the way, this new mysterious DeLorean can travel through time and space because it has an Amazon Echo in it. Also, Doc is more exaggerated than his movie counterpart and does all these wacky inventions like camera clothes changer or muddy ceiling boots. It's... Really cartoony. Back on point, Doc's son Jules, or the smart one, wants more responsibility and he asks Doc to be trusted carrying around the car keys. I shall guard the keys with my life. And so they're immediately stolen. <gasps> Jules! That punk stole the car keys! This happens pretty much every time they ever go anywhere. Over in the B story, Marty's staring at a woman and then he falls off the roof. I guess the pervert doesn't fall far from the pervert tree. He somehow lives, and so they go into the toy store. After a minute, Einstein, who I'm pretty sure is also voiced by Dan Castanella, <laughs> notices that the kids are running after the key thief. Jumpin' Jingle Bells! Jumpin' Jingle Bells. So like most Christmases, the mom is forgotten while the boys run off to do something. While Clara is alone, she runs into trouble. Or actually, trouble barges into the toy store. Mr. Tannen! That's Biff's version in this time, and it's his name is Ebiff Neezer Tannen. Yep, that's his name. It figures. Old Ebiff Neezer here holds the mortgage to these weird mouse people's toy store, and they're an hour late on their payment, so he's gonna send them to the debtor's prison. No! While he's there, he tries to sexually assault Clara, and she smacks him, and so somehow he can send her to debtor's prison as well. Take the wench as well. Oh, now she's been captured. That happens about every other episode. I can remember like two episodes where both of these things have happened. It happens all the time. Back to the key chase! He ascended yon rickety stairs! And so they ascend as well, finding not a young child, but instead a grown orangey man. A man with the power of commercial breaks! For a second there, I was thinking about putting a fake commercial in here, but editing just takes so long anyway, so uh, let's just get back to the show. Only on Disney XD. The boys have disappeared without a trace element. There's 100% more physical comedy in this cartoon than there was in the movies. Having lost track of both the kids and Clara, Doc and Marty decide to ask a group of carolers if they might have seen them. Although it is the Christmas season, the beds wakes are all in prison. The mortgage, it was the reason, said old miser Tannen. These carolers sing two more verses like that to tell Doc and Marty where the kids and Clara are. And so the two split up. Must go after the boys myself. 
You'll find out about Clara! I hope you know what you're doing, Doc! Yeah, he doesn't. Jules and Vern have been tied up by this guy who looks like Willy Wonka. But hey, look on the bright side. We have located the young ruffian who pilfered the DeLorean keys. But on the other hand, Carrot Top wants to kill them. We'll get rid of them, same as the others. The key thief doesn't want to witness two other children's deaths, so he convinces Murdoch to let them become pickpockets instead. Perhaps they could earn their keep picking pockets. Ah, picking pockets. When we actually catch back up with Clara, she's in the tannin wing of the debtor's prison. Oh, there we be in the Epiphanesa tannin wing. You're lucky. Got a semi private uh, With a bunch of Simpsons characters, and I think Shrek is in the background there, and there's like a couple of Muppets, maybe. Meanwhile, Doc gets robbed trying to find out where the kids are. Perhaps I might be able to help you after all. Meanwhile, the kids are on their first pickpocketing session, and they steal one of those pairs of socks suspender things. And anyway, they take the guy's belt, and his pants fall down, and he's like, oh, it's the pickpocket menaces, and the constables chase the kids away. And then Vern delivers this sick burn. Please, Father, let me hold them. I'm all grown up now. Thanks, Jules. Oh, roasted. Marty's plan A for breaking Clara out of prison involves just simply talking to the guard and trying to convince him that she's been pardoned, but that won't work because it's debtor's prison and only one who can release these poor souls is Ebifnisa Tannen. He does, however, come up with a second plan. That Tannen's a real Scrooge, he is. He is. Ah, Scrooge. Doc does eventually find the kids, but the thieves think that he's a narc. Then he must be a ruddy copper! A copper? Heavens to Kepler, no! Well, whoever you is, you're here to stay. Anyway, the kids go ahead and save him while getting the car keys to the DeLorean back with the help from their new friend Reg, and all four of them go running out of the building uh, with the thieves chasing them. Meanwhile, Marty is trying to pull a Christmas carol on Ebifnezer. Past, present, or future? All of the above. And it doesn't work at all. A workhouse. Children are actually laboring on Christmas Eve. It really gets to you, doesn't it? No, I just remembered a little eight-year-old who owes me sixpence! Ebifnezer Tannen is a terrible, terrible person who, every time he gets the chance, does something even more awful to somebody who's less fortunate than him. But eventually he sees the error in his ways when Marty's VR headset accidentally blasts Godzilla onto the wall. And so the day was saved, and Clara and the little mouse people were freed from the debtor's prison, and of course Doc got away no, from the I'm thieves by using his muddy dumb. ceiling boots. A party at rest will remain at rest, but a party in motion will remain in motion. Owned by Isaac Newton. Unless, of course, that body is acted upon by an outside force. And then to wrap up the story, the little urchin boy goes to live with the little mouse people, and it's a Christmas miracle for everyone, until Ebifnezer walks in and sees Marty not being a Christmas spirit, and gets all tanniny and tries to chase him and beat him to death. And then he crashes into a cart of pudding, and the carolers sing. Piggy pudding, the smell of the piggy pudding. And I hate it. And it was a good... Christmas and a happy new year. Give me a happy old year. It's 1845. And now we're back to Doc because the episode's over. See, and now we've gotten to the part that I forgot to mention. There's also a little bit of a uh, learning experience at the end of every episode, but again, because they clearly had limited time with Christopher Lloyd for this series, they had to delegate that task of teaching science to Bill Nye the Science Guy. Billy Boy's about to need a nose job. All right, so what did I think of the Back to the Future Christmas special, A Dickens of a Christmas? It's not a great show, 
It's not a great episode of a, of a show. I mean, it's probably one of the better episodes I've seen of the Back to the Future animated show, and I do plan on eventually watching all of them. Uh, but mainly, I guess it's just kind of it's kind of here. It it was it's a thing that existed, and as a Back to the Future fan, I am acknowledging that it existed, and uh, it was okay. It wasn't great, but it was only 30 minutes, and so it's it's over and done with, and yeah. I mean, I like Back to the Future. I like some of the little references. Mostly this show is just kind of a disappointment to me in general. It's a dumb cartoon show for kids, and uh, it doesn't try to be good. It doesn't try to... It, it's not really out of its way bad or anything. It just doesn't try to be very good, and uh, it also irks me in a major way that Dan Castanella play, plays Doc Brown and not Christopher Lloyd when they have access to him. He's in like every episode and yet somehow they still felt the need to have Dan Castanella play him. I guess they couldn't afford to have Christopher Lloyd be in all of every episode. I don't, I don't know. So uh, yeah, it's a Christmas special. I'm just watching it because it's Back to the Future related. I have lots of Back to the Future videos and I'm a big fan and I feel the uh the need and the urge to do that especially since i got since i got a copy of it for christmas if you guys like this video make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other christmas videos and some of my other back to the future videos and i will see you guys next time and uh yeah just thanks for watching bye McCordy. <laughs>